three, two, one. And we are go Monday morning. And this is the first, well, not really the first. I think it's about my fourth crew cast. It's the first consistent crew cast that you will hear from this point on every Monday. I'm going to be putting up one of these bad boys. Now, I am also filming this here at the same time, but... The filming of this episode will go up on Wednesday this week, hump day, just to get you over. The only reason I'm doing that is because I said the first video of the new consistency will start on Tuesday. So to not confuse anyone, I'm going to do that. I'm going to launch that first video on Tuesday and then this one will go up on Wednesday. But as a standard, you will get this crew cast on iTunes, SoundCloud and a video will be put up on the YouTube channel to... Uh, to, to run you into the new week, and that'll be there. So you're actually gonna get four videos a week. You're actually gonna get four videos. So for those that don't know, yesterday, I think it was yesterday I released, yes, you released a video on YouTube, speculating as to whether I'd quit YouTube, what was going on, what was the whole shenanigans, and uh, the response from you guys has been absolutely insane. It's been beautiful. Um, we kind of regenerated that uh, love that we used to see from the old school days going on and people seem to be amped up about getting back to that kind of fashion and I think we're all a little bit fed up, a little bit fed up with the way it's been going and um, that's what this podcast is going to be on about today and it's the fact that this kind of thing can happen to you anytime, anywhere in life, throughout life and it will continue to happen, you can't stop it and it's how we kind of get around it, how we deal with these things and uh, also to let you guys feel that you're not, you're not on your own, you're not mental, we all, we all feel this way, we all have these moments. Don't we, Mucker? Huh? So for those of you who can't see, we have got a, a giant minion sat next to me. Is it Dave? I think we'll call him Dave. So Dave's going to be with me as well today. But in the future podcast, I will try and get people involved. So whenever I'm traveling or some of the guys come over and stay, obviously we've got um, Body Power Weekend coming up soon. Um, that we will not be at Body Power as a team. But what we will be doing is we will be at a pop-up store in, uh, in Birmingham. And that... Uh, will be a fun time. So you'll still be able to come and see us on the Body Power Weekend at the same time, we'll just be in a different place. But it means I'll be surrounded by people coming over from America. Some of the boys will be here. Hopefully, hopefully, you know, we'll have a lot of the crew and I'll be able to sit us all down and maybe do another one of those group group podcasts that we first started out. The first episode was really cool. And we all sat down together and did that. You like that? So I'll endeavor to do these as and when we can. But today, let's talk about it. Let's kick into it. So why did I come um, about with the video that you saw yesterday about being pissed off with YouTube, how it was just this kind of automaton of robotic style dehumanized um, people there at the moment. And that's kind of how I feel. That's how I feel. I'm not going to bullshit about it. I don't feel, I feel they've given a human face to their brand now, but uh, there's still no real care for content creators uh, in terms of, hu you know, relating to the human being behind the channel. Um, they care about their revenue their traffic and and whatever fuels that is what they will drive so hopefully that'll change in time because a lot of people seem to be complaining about the same things a lot of people seem to be talking about this same problem but very little's been done about it in terms of actual um productive things being put forward because every issue that i put forward when i went down there as much as my account manager and the manager of the uk partnerships who I talked to whilst I was down there, as much as they as they cared on a personal level, I don't think they have the ability to actually put into change or implementation anything that I brought to light in terms of like the, the personal things that I see with the channel, like me telling them that I could tell there was something wrong. I don't know what's bloody wrong with it. I don't write these algorithms. I'm not an engineer for YouTube, so I can't say, hey, look, it's the, uh, you know, it's a sequence 492 on the line of the script within the Terminator's reboot program. <laughs> I have no fucking clue. I can just say, look, there's something crazily wrong here. Please find out what it is. And what all they can do is relay, relay that to someone else who looks into something, but they're not the person I've then spoken to, that chain's then been broken. So the person who it's handed off to, they have no personal link to me. So even though I've had this personal link of sitting across the table from the account manager who deals with my stuff and everything, that link is lost immediately when they hand off the issues. And obviously, they have thousands, hundreds, basically millions of channels, fuck knows. So the what I worked out was basically... We can reach out and do things as much as we want. We can go and try and get as much help as we want. Um, but at the end of it, it comes down to us. And this is the same for everything that we do. You can utilize all the tools that are available to you. You can, you can make sure that you are researching what you need to be doing, where you need to be doing it, how you need to be doing it. But at the end of the day, it comes down to you being passionate and 
driving through the rough times so that you can get back through to the good times because not everything is smooth sailing it's never going to be this especially in a technological world and the social media world and everything now things change so quickly and so rapidly and there is <laughs> it's it's a machine it doesn't care it will chew things up and spit them out and it'll move on to the next and uh, i think what you have to do is you have to remain true to yourself. And this is where it crosses over into the real world, the practicalities of this mentality is, that'll happen to you in anything, workplaces, uh, goal setting, training, diet, family, relationships. If you get lost, if you forget why you started any of those things, and you, you move away from that, and you try and conform or mold yourself to an, another, another path, that's when you're gonna get lost because you're not being you anymore. And I've always been like this. I've been very good, like through life, I hit some shit, you know. If I didn't like something in life, I would endeavor to change it. And by that, I mean like if I hated a job that I had, I would, I wouldn't just quit the job and walk out like, yo, I'm out, see ya, bitches, later. You know, I put into a plan of action. So I made sure that I started reaching out for other avenues to find other things to do. And the moment one of those kind of like hooked then I would get rid of that thing I didn't like, but I always made sure that there was a plan of action. So I never left myself high and dry. Um, and that's kind of how you need to be. If you don't enjoy something, start making moves, start making a change in your life that gets you back to where you want to be. Because if you're not going to make the change, nobody else is going to do it for you. We live in this fucking world now where people seem to think that the world owes them something. Because you're looking at pretty pictures on Instagram, you're doing, you know, following these people who are living great lives or seemingly you think are living great lives, traveling the world, taking pictures, getting paid loads of money. Half the time, um, they're not really getting as paid as much as you think they are. And the people you don't think are getting paid as much are actually the ones killing it. Um, plus, you have to remember, you're looking at snippets of someone's life. Just like when you look through a photo album from when you're a kid, rarely, unless it's fucking funny, do you see pictures of you when you were, were crying or, or had fallen over or your picture of you with your mum pissed off in a corner because you just unfolded all her washing. You know, you don't see those pictures because they're not happy moments. And you have to treat social media like those happy moments. So don't live your life trying to follow somebody who you're only seeing snippets of their life. This is where YouTube, I thought, was such a great avenue because we can be really open and we could show you a lot of our lives. And even though, yes, it does get edited down and watered down, we were still able to show you those parts where we struggled and how we got through them. And that's what I loved about it. And I think that is what I lost. That is what I lost. I started focusing too much on um, just always trying to create, not positivity, because I'm always, obviously that's a great thing to always want to do, but I think I, I got away from, from focusing on the reality of situations and started creating... Um, environments, I created the environment rather than living in, the, in an environment. If that makes sense? So I, I want to get back. I want to get back to just, just being raw and truthful and honest. And if I fuck up, I'm going to show you. And I'm going to show you how to fix it. And I'm going to go through some stuff, like I just said then, about how you need to view things properly and how you need to be in control of what you see and why you see it, but also understand that it's it's not the the hundred percent full picture that you're seeing when it comes to social media and all that palaver. So with that in mind, let's talk about let's talk about these things. Why why do people fail at something um, that there was originally they were so excited to to get into? And this we'll start it we'll, we'll base it around fitness because hey, this is what we are. You know, we're, we're in that fitness world. But this is going to correlate across the board: relationships, jobs, blah. Okay. The reason we are so good when we get going is because it's new. And anything new is exciting. And if you're excited about something, then you're amped up to do it. You have this kind of positive link to it. And you're excited to get started. It's something new. Then, especially with the gym, when you do start, you, you kind of, you, not only do you see instant changes, but you feel them. You physically feel them. You're sore from training. You know, and you're, you're, there's so much that's so new to you. You're constantly learning. For those first few months, you're always learning something new, little little new movements or a new exercise, or you, you get better at something, and that's a reward for you. So when you learn these new things or when things progress, you're, you're getting this positive reinforcement, this reward system going on, and you start to see this change. Then, when the body begins to adapt, when it begins to kind of settle into the training regime, and you, and you kind of 
have finished with those newbie, not newbie gains, because the newbie gains things is a little bit of a falsity because people see like pumps and tightening up of the body and all that as being a gain. But all that really is, is just you kind of being more consistent in your living. So you don't really lose that that ability to gain. But what you lose is is the the sensation of that first that first hit, that first trigger. Just like a smoker, when when they first start smoking a cigarette, it makes them feel super high and maybe a little bit sick. But as they become a prolonged smoker, that that high wears off. They have to smoke more to get it. You know, it's the same thing. Anything that you do for a prolonged period of time, that initial high is going to wear off. And when it comes to fitness, so getting away from smoking, don't smoke, kids. It's bad for you. Yeah, it can look cool if you're James Dean on a motorbike in black and white, but it ain't worth the fucking death. <laughs> but, um, so it's like, man, tangents. Where the hell are, What was I talking about? <laughs> yeah, right. So getting back to the fitness side of it, once once you get into that grind and you start to, and you know, those initial kind of big trigger impulses of, oh, it's a new pump, oh, new vein. You know, once all those quick things go away and it comes down to the nitty gritty of, of realizing that it's a grind and it's a slow process and there are no real quick fixes, suddenly that excitement that you initially had, that wears off. And then it comes down to you and your drive and your determination and your commitment to your goal. And this is where people begin to tail off because they don't have that self-drive and that self-commitment or they don't commit to creating that self-drive and the commitment and the consistency. So they begin to tail off, they begin to fall back and then they begin to break that new habit that they just got into. And because it's a new habit, it's easy to break because it's not ingrained into your lifestyle, it's not ingrained into your, into your social life, into your timetable with your work. So it's, it's after that initial buzz where you really find out who you are and you have to be aware of this. If you're aware that that's gonna happen, you understand that there's gonna be a point of a high and then it's gonna kinda crash down, you're gonna be much more prepared and much more realistic in your goal sets. And goal sets are gonna be one of the big things if you just started lifting, you started on a new, a new training regime or a new job or a new passion or whatever, be realistic in the way you set your goals. Too many people, they like, so say, say I wanna be, a, a, a TV presenter, a TV, I wanted to be a TV presenter. My goal would be to get on, on a TV, on a mainstream channel, on a regular basis to be, and people put that as like the next step after they have done one audition. They think, right, that's it, and, and then I'll be on TV. They, that's how they do it. They think I'll get an audition and I'll get on TV. They don't understand that the people who've been on TV have probably done a grind of shitty radio shows, crappy kind of like unseen um, red carpet, zealous celebrity kind of crap. They've they've done their time. They've put in the work, and that getting on TV is a reward. They didn't just go from from a normal job to decide they wanted to be on TV. There was a middle ground they had to grind through to get to where they wanted to be, and that's what you have to do with your goals. Is you have to set those small goals. You have to understand that you're going to have to go through the levels to get to the top point. That that pin, pinnacle goal. And if you do that, you're going to then get back to that reward system where there is little failure and more success because you're setting yourself smaller goals, they're more achievable. And when you achieve those goals, you get that same reward, that same feeling of positivity. And then you get that, that connection, that positive connection to what you're trying to achieve again. And that's how you keep moving forward is, is to create realistic goals that give you a, a, a realistic time span in which to achieve them. And it gives you more drive to hit that goal because it's realistic and it's achievable. So it's pretty much a thing of just like not underestimating the work involved and not overestimating your ability to get to your set point in a certain amount of time. Because shit always takes longer than we expect and shit is always harder than we expect. And if we live with that mentality, then when stuff does get harder, we're ready for it. But if you don't, you're not gonna be prepared and it's gonna kick you in the dick, it's gonna kick you in the nuts and you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna fall back, you're gonna shrink away, you're gonna fail to push through and that's what we don't want. So the big thing there, the first one is your goal setting. Make sure that that is correct. Make sure it's realistic. Um, and I think, yeah, in, in time, you, uh, you become very adept at being able to do that once you, once you get used to setting those realistic goals and target lines, and realistic targets and timelines, and uh, you'll become more proficient and you'll get better. And just by nature, you'll improve over time. So that's what I want to say is the world doesn't owe you shit. You got to work for it. You know, you owe nothing. Uh, stop looking at 
at single flash pictures of people's lives and think that that encompasses everything about their being because it doesn't. Um, like I said in the, in the video before, a lot of you guys might not know that it can take like two or three days to edit up a simple vlog video. A lot of people might think, I think they live under the um, impression that because of people like Casey Neistat and people like that who are doing daily vlogs, um, that a vlog, you know, you film it during the day, you edit it that night and it's done and you move on to the next one. That's not the case. Like people like, like Casey, a, a bit of a kind of an anomaly. Uh, uh, his work ethic is insane and, you know, He's also very proficient at what he does because it's his style and he create, he's not trying to be anyone else. He was being him. So he, and you can see that he has that kind of OCD organization. And if you don't have that, like I do not have that. Fuck no, I'm not organized in the slightest. Um, I mean, I only just started using my iPhone diary this year. Like as one of my resolutions for uh, 2018 was to, Start putting stuff, writing it down and making sure I commit to it because I have a real bad habit of saying yes to everything and then I run out of time to do anything. <laughs> Standard behavior. And a lot of us are like this. So it's, it's, it's living within your own limitations and just aiming to get better. And when you find a weakness, when you see a weakness, here's another way of, of addressing things in life in general. You're not going to be great at everything. Nobody is. Nobody. Even the, the smartest, most athletic motherfucker in the world has a weakness. He has weaknesses. You know, they might not be apparent, they might never show them to you, but trust me, they're there. They have their own struggles and they have their own things going on. So if you understand that we're going to have these these points where we we falter, you can see them as a positive. So once you find a weakness and you see it, what you need to not think is, I'm shit, I'm crap, look how bad I am at that. What you need to think is, shit, look at what I've realized I suck at this. And if I improve that by any any amount above what it's already at now, then I'm going to be better overall. So it's a positive that you spot a weakness because once you see that weakness, you can then implement change. And if you do even slightly change that weakness and make it a little bit better, then you're going to improve overall and it's going to be a success. So finding a weakness is great because to get a positive result from a slight change is, is easy. But whereas to create change for something you're already good at is going to be harder because, you know, you, there's there's less kind of wiggle room for that improvement because you're already kind of good. You're already at that top end, if that makes sense. And that's how you, you have to kind of treat things. You have to flip the way you react to something. You have to flip the way you think about things because a lot of this is, is a mental strain and a mental struggle. And to be able to defeat those little inner voices that, that say to you, because we all have it and we all have those moments of worry is to not allow them to get too loud is to take a step back go listen shit is never going to be that bad we can always have change we can always have control we can make things better and if you start thinking like that you'll start acting like that you'll start opening your eyes to the world around you and you'll start taking in more opportunities. And plus, if you're doing more work, if you're being more kind of proactive and energetic, chances are more opportunities are going to come your way because you're just simply putting yourself out there more. That's what I mean about people thinking the world fucking owes them something. If you're sat back expecting something to come to you, nothing's coming to you because nobody knows you're there because you're not putting yourself anywhere. You're not putting things out there. You're not working. You're not hustling. Nobody's saying that you have to do the sleep three hours a night, work, 21 hours a day. No one's saying that. But you have to put in time, you have to put in work, and you have to um, to reap reward. You've got to put in energy. And it's not easy. And, you know, it's fine for you to feel like sometimes shit ain't going right. But then you have to sit back and go, so how do I change it? And it's as simple as that. It really is as fucking simple as that. You have to be strong-willed and strong of mind, whilst also understanding you're not perfect and you will have weaknesses. Um, and I just want to say a big thank you to everybody who sent such lovely messages. Uh, my phone is plugged in over there. Let's see if I can get it. Hang on, two seconds. Let's just... So when I put the video out, I kind of, I thought, you know, there is that clickbait element to it. I put in, oh, have I quit YouTube? You know, like that. And it, but it was a serious thing because I did, I did legitimately for, for a couple of weeks. I was done. I wasn't really going to come back. And, um, then when I started putting out that this video was coming up, the amount of messages that you guys sent me, if I just on, on Instagram alone, never mind, the comments in the new video are awesome. And thank you all for the support. It's, it's great to see you all coming back and 
sharing your voice because this was the point of it, wasn't it? It was to create a community. This was the whole point of fitness, wasn't it? When we started, remember this shit? Where we wanted to create a community. We wanted to create that, that sense of a place where somebody could come and ask a question and get an answer and not be ridiculed and not feel stupid. And that's what we want to get back to. And, and I think we're starting to, with people voicing the fact that they're a bit pissed off about things and how it's not going right, not in a woe is me kind of way, just in a, this isn't what we all intended to start with. Let's kind of revamp where we are. Let's take a look at where we are and let's get back to what we fucking wanted. And that is seen here. But if I go on my messages here are just endless, endless, all positive, positive messages. And then you keep going and going and going. And they're the ones I've opened. Um, if I go and, and then unopened is 99 plus message requests. Um, and I will make an effort to reply to every single one of you. Some of you have got replies today already because I went through a load this morning. And even like just in the last hour, um, just so many things just here. Uh, watch the video. Um, it is amazing. It's great to see that we're going to get back to that. Keep the videos coming, man. Great stuff. Uh, people mentioning me in their stories. Um, just this cool shit, man. It's it's super motivating. And this is the other. This is takes me on to the next point. Is that lifted me up? Like this morning when I woke up, I felt fucking great about the world because I was surrounded by positivity. It was in an electronic form, but it doesn't matter what form it takes. But Surrounding yourself with positivity and surrounding yourself with people who have the same mentality as you is huge. It's bigger than you will ever realize until it goes away. If um, Even people I know, they will, they'll have... This is the one that gets me the most, okay? You know you've got that guy, that friend who everyone goes, uh, let's call him Steve. All right. No, let's not call him Steve because you guys are thinking Steve. <laughs> Who <laughs> I know. Right, let's call him a Watumbo. Because nobody knows a fucking Watumbo. <laughs> I'm like, hey man, you know, oh, you're friends with Watumbo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, what do you think of him? Ah, uh, you know, he's all right most of the time. What? Oh, he's all right most of the time. Well, what about the rest of the time? Ah, oh, he's a bit of a prick. So why is he in your life? If, if, this, if these human beings are only a, like a, a decent, positive influence on your life for some of the time, meaning the rest of the time they're either a negative or a drain, why are they in your life? Maybe it's because we're, you're too nice, or maybe it's just you're too weak to maybe say, they're bad for me. And that can be the same for a relationship. You have to sometimes take a step back and go, does this person bring positivity into my world? Do they help me be the best that I can be? Do I have a positive effect on them or a negative effect on them? If there's even a question that there's negative times there that are consistent and and have a real effect on your life, you need to either sit down and change that relationship with that person or get rid of them out of your life. And sometimes it's fucking tough, dude. Like, it's guys, it's not easy to do that. I'm not saying it's simple. Um, but over time, the more you do it, the easier it gets. And the better your group of friends will be that surround you. They will be smaller. But for me, that's fucking fine. I would rather be surrounded by four or five really good people than 50 acquaintances that really, you know, if, if shit ever got real, wouldn't really be there for me because that's what matters. And when you're flying high and everything's great in your world, you, you, you know, you can take on anything. But when you're feeling a bit down, or you're feeling a little low, or shit's getting tough, like if you're in school, you've got exams, you've got heavy projects going on, if you've got people around you going, telling you that it's gonna be okay, and that you and and giving you truth about, you know, you be, you know, set yourself a time to have you being lazy, why are you sat there watching TV, you could be doing this, come on, man, you know you gotta get that shit done, if you do this now, you'll be fine later. If you don't have those people around you telling you that, and being honest with you, but in a positive way, to make you a better person, because they're looking out for you, then, you're gonna feel very alone and shit's gonna pile up on you quick. So make sure the people around you are real, is what I'm saying. Make sure they're real. Make sure that they align with your way of thinking, where you wanna be, do they support you? Because they should support you. That's one thing I can say about, you know, my upbringing. Um, my mum was super supportive in the fact that she never said, we, you know, we couldn't try something. We, we tried so, we tried a so load of shit and failed. I, I moved back home twice in my 20s because I, I had to make a choice. I was either, I had to stay in the situation I was in or 
I had to move back home, back in with my mum as an adult, as a grown man, move back in with my mum so that I could give myself the opportunity financially and strategically to be able to launch myself into another pathway. And my mother always accepted that. She was great, supported me in it. And I was man enough to ask for that help. Because sometimes you've got to go back to square one to get to where you want to be. And there's no shame in that whatsoever. So understand that the people around you are just as important as your mindset. It's your environment, your whole environment around you, everything that surrounds you. So if you're one of these guys like me, if you get easily distracted and things like, I'm terrible on my phone, okay? I have games on here that I don't know why. Say like I'm transferring files on a computer and it's gonna take two minutes, I'll open my phone and I'll, I'll, and I'll, I'll start messing on that game because it's quick and it's easy. Files transferred two minutes ago, 15 minutes later, I'm still playing some stupid game trying to match five stars and win a banana <laughs> on something shit. So I've, acted, I've deleted games from my phone now because I know that they distract me. And I, had to, I have to do things like this. I have to treat myself a little bit like a child sometimes, but it does have a positive knock-on effect that it makes you just more productive. And it's simple things like that that can go a long way. So that is one of my things. Okay, so here's my two, two major points so far. If you complain about something, but you take no steps to change what it is you're complaining about, then you have no right to keep complaining because you are not doing shit to change anything, okay? That is a major way you should be thinking. And two, if you have weaknesses, if you have issues with the way you are and the way you structure your days, your times, your consistency, if you have, how you handle your time and schedules, then Make a change to your habits. Break bad habits and replace them with good habits. That will immediately help. It won't be easy at the start, but eventually that good habit will stick and it'll become easy and it'll just become your routine. A lot of little things, a lot of little changes, a lot of little changes over a long period of time build up to one big result. So don't ignore the little things. Build yourself from the ground up, you know, it's it really, it's these little things, it's these little things that people don't think about. And getting back to training, it's the same thing. Like, <laughs> the other day I was in, uh, I was in the gym, it was late, it was nine till 10 o'clock at night and I was in there uh, on my own training. And like, I only had a limited amount of time, so I was kind of head down and on my way. And don't get me wrong, like, I don't judge people in the gym. I, I don't, they don't affect me. I'm in there doing my shit, they're in there doing their shit. But, I look around, I pay attention to, <laughs> to what's going on. And there were six young guys in there, six, all working out together, but not together. So they're all doing different shit. One's doing biceps, one's doing shoulders, one's doing back, but they're all using dumbbells and they're all in the same little area. And in synchronized, I don't know, what would you call it? Synchronized stupidity? Stupidity is a bit harsh, but they were all, <laughs> they were all doing a different exercise all at the same time. And every single one of them was doing it wrong. The one doing bicep curls wasn't extending his arms fully. He was doing the partial reps. The one on shoulders doing lateral raises was swinging the dumbbells above his head. The guy doing back was kind of hunched over like some kind of, I don't know, some, some little alien dude and link, winging his weights around somewhere. The dude on chest had his legs flailing about. It was crazy. And I was just like, there's six of you all doing shit wrong all together. Yet you're all stood here talking about training together in between all your sets. And not only that shit, these same motherfuckers talk about steroids and they can't even do an exercise properly. And this is, this is what pisses me off with where we're at in, the, in, in this bullshit at the moment. It's like, there's this, there's this nonsense that every, everybody in the world's on fucking steroids because they've got a, a set of abs. It's just ridiculous. I met a kid in the gym the other day, he was a boxer. Great, great looking shape, very athletic, lean, quite thin, by no means big at all. Wouldn't think he was like a bodybuilder by any stretch. You'd just think he was a fit, like lean, athletic kid. So the first thing that he said to me was, literally one of the first things out of his mouth is, I've never done steroids or anything like that because he started talking about weightlifting. And I had to stop him and say, that's so sad. He went, what? He almost took it effect. So I was like, no, not you. The fact that you have to feel that you have to say that to me because some idiot has said that to you because you look better than them. That's clearly what had happened is that somebody had accused him of it because the kid had abs and was in shape. So... 
And this is this fucking shortcut mentality that people have at the moment. And this is what you have to steer away from. Anyone that talks like that around you, leave them. Don't argue with them. Don't fact that it's like trying to play chess with a pigeon, talking to someone like that. They're going to knock the pieces over on the board, shit all over it, and fly off back to their little, little group like they won some shit. It's just ridiculous. Stay. Not everybody's on fucking drugs, people. Some people have just been training a long time, very well, and very consistently, and you can do exactly the same thing. Now, you're not going to be Mr. Olympia. You're probably not even going to be a Mr. Olympia physique because you, they all do drugs. We know that. But that's the, that's the niche part of the world. It's not the everyman. Just believe me in that. I don't know. It pisses me off. It annoys me. Like right now, I have like, what's here? So I put it, I have, I've been doing acupuncture recently and um, on my shoulder, I got an uh, acupuncture needles put in all through this front delt here. Um, you can't see this if you're just listening, but on my front delt, I had four needles put in my front delt because I tweaked my left shoulder doing some, ironically doing instructional lateral raises for you guys for a video that you haven't seen yet that will be coming your, oh no, you might've seen it. No, you haven't seen it. It's a shoulder video, how to build bigger rounder shoulders. And um, I was holding the, the dumbbell out, showing where a lateral raise should finish, like how the elbow should be higher than the hand, exactly to stop what I saw that kid doing the other day in the gym. And I'd been working out for effectively five hours because we filmed a lot of videos in one day and I was just tired and my shoulder popped as I was just holding this, this dumbbell out. Like, Fuck, it hurt. Um, so, we addressed that, it was like, there's like a tendon that runs in between the two heads of your front muscle. So we put the needles in there, and instantly when this one went in towards the lower part of the shoulder, all the others, you can't really feel. If you've ever not had, if you've not had acupuncture before, you don't feel the needles going in. They're so fine, they're like hair fine. They're super, super fine. And um, they literally tap them in with their fingers and you don't feel them going in until they go into a part of the muscle where it's super tight. Then what happens is the body instantly relax, uh, reacts to the foreign object going into that muscle. So where it's already tight and there's tension, when the, the needle goes into it, what happens is I think is that the muscle reacts by tightening even harder around that needle um, before they relax off. And you feel that instantly when it goes in. And when the person doing the acupuncture sees it or feels it, then they know they're kind of in that spot where they need to be working and they can actually then manipulate the needle. It's called needling. Um, the needles have like a spring head on the top of them. So you can, they can kind of do star motions with the top of the needle. And even though the top of it's moving a lot because it's like a, um, a spring head, the actual base of the needle that's stuck in you is only moving very, very small amounts. And then you literally can tell them when they say like almost like a nerve firing off, they say, when you feel it, let me know. And when you, when you get that kind of like, oh yeah, there, that's where they leave the needle. Cause then what it does is it signals to the body to get blood and nutrients and everything to that area because it kind of, it creates literally a physical signal for the body to react to. Um, and instantly when it went in the shoulder, it, it instantly, I got that nerve impulse. So you shouldn't even have to manipulate it. And it, it swelled up like pretty much straight after. Uh, she put compression on it afterwards and the swelling went down pretty much within like a minute of being compressed. Uh, but then the next day, I woke up with this bruise on the front of my delt. And my point being for this is, now, I lift weights and do look like a bodybuilder. And I can guarantee people who are watching this or seen pictures recently or anything like that, first thing that jumps into their fucking head is, oh, nothing to do with maybe someone punched him in the shoulder or anything like that. They will have immediately thought, that's an injection site, like bruising or whatever. And that pisses me off. So, again, jump into conclusions. You can have the jump into the conclusion of thinking someone's wonderful life from that single picture is awesome and everything about it is awesome. You can also jump to immediate negatives about people. And it's, all, it's, all, it's more about you than it is about them in that situation. So if you find yourself looking at things and your immediate reaction is negative, you know, just catch yourself doing that and maybe make a change to not do it. I literally made a New Year's resolution this year to not be as bitchy when I see something. So immediately when I see something, I now try and look at the positive side of something. So rather than looking at something and going, well, they deserve that, what a tool, I kind of go, ah, that sucks, man, that he had to be in that situation. He felt he needed to be in that situation and that's what's happened. You know, so I take a more compassionate look at life and it's made me kind of a happier, easier going person. 
Even with my road rage, I'm terrible in the car. Dude, I'm sure some of you can from kind of dear to this. In the car, again, you get that you get that aggressive side of you comes out. And I went on to a speed awareness course recently. And um, I was made to realize a couple of things that really helped me think things through. Now I was only done doing like 34 in a 30 zone. It was an average speed check. So obviously I just missed a sign somewhere and didn't decelerate quickly enough between the two cameras. But I found out, you know, when you, I'm like, this is a timekeeping thing. I'm late to everything. I'm late to everything. So I'm always rushing, which inevitably leads to me speeding or getting aggressive. Or, Get out of my way, You're old people, bloody micro, you know, all this. And um, I was given some statistics on this um, safety driving course thing that if, right, you do 35 miles an hour in a 30 zone for like three or four miles, you will get to your destination 16 seconds faster. That's it. 16 seconds. But by driving 35 miles an hour instead of 30, if you hit somebody at 35 miles an hour, instead of there being an 18% chance of serious injury, it doubles to something like 36, you know, or just under 36% of a chance of seriously injuring that person for you to get somewhere 16 seconds quicker. That really made me think. And that makes me not rush as much now. Anyway, you get what I'm saying? You get what I'm saying? Let's move on. Next point. What else do I want to talk about today? I wanted to talk about um, where we're going to be going with the channel and what you can expect uh, in terms of the Tough Mudder and things like that. Because some of you have been asking me, when is this Tough Mudder thing going to be? What's going on with the boxing and then the show? So the Tough Mudder, I'm actually, I've already contacted Tough Mudder. They are down. They want to do something in collaboration with me. And that means a couple of things. One, it means we will have a specific date where you can race alongside me. It will be in the UK. It will be after May. I was originally going to do it in May, but it turns out we've got the Gymshark pop-up store um, the weekend prior, and then the weekend after is a busy weekend as well. So it just made no sense to do that May date, which I was going to do, which is going to be in Nottingham. And it actually turned out better because it means we can do one either the, I think it's the next month, June, but obviously I want to be able to set this up properly. So we'll aim for June, July, probably somewhere in there. Um, in London, so it's the bigger events, and there will be a specific sign-up for you guys, and I'm, what I'm going to try and do is try and get a discounted sign-up rate for anybody who's going to be joining the team, the crew, so we'll have a crew sign-up page, and then I want everybody to, I think what we'll do is create a cumulative, um, either a, a GoFundMe or a charity style page. So yeah, the idea is going to be that we're going to ha have this sign-up, and I want everyone to be raising money for a cause. We will decide on a a, a group calls together, we'll put it out to a vote. So we'll put up kind of some top ideas for what we want to raise money for. And then you guys can all vote on it and that will be what we do. Or maybe we can even split it between a couple of different charities. But the whole goal of it is to give each and every one of us something to aim for, a date to aim for, where not only are we going to be doing something that's going to put some love into the world, bring some happiness to some people in the world, it also gives us a chance to come together in a huge moment of like, teamwork and positivity and battle, battle through something side by side, making friends, talking, having fun. And I will make it the best day that I can make it for you guys. I will aim to have us set up in like, we're going to get like our own custom area. What I'm going to try and do is try and get us our own tent. The whole day is going to be filmed. So you guys will be able to feature in the film uh, that I'll put together, that Tough Model put together. Plus, I um, put this up to Gymshark about maybe doing some like unique one-off t-shirts or something like that that each of you guys could, can get for joining in and coming along and putting in the effort, putting in the time. Plus, obviously, alongside this, as I said, we've got, I've got the new uh, method of training series that's going up, which is going to be the strength training on the compound work, how I'm going from kind of shit to not so shit. And I'm going to be creating downloadable content for you guys. But what I also want to do is I want to implement this Tough Mudder training into that kind of structure. So I'm going to show you how alongside doing the weights and getting stronger and getting better at the deadlift and the compounds and all that kind of stuff is how to get fit for this kind of mental marathon style. Now, the one we're going to do, I think it's like five mile run or something. Is it seven kilometers or something? I want to do one where everybody will be able to do it no matter what, but will still represent a challenge for us. Um, I think I'm going to do the one that has 13 obstacles, something like that, like an obstacle every half, is it every half mile? Something like that. 
Maybe. Yeah. Anyway, we're doing the middle one. There's like an easier Tough Mudder, a middle one, and then a holy shit. We'll do the middle one. And it's not about the time on the day. It's not about um, who gets there the fastest at the end. It's about doing something together as a team with other people, all with the same goal, just to enjoy the day, have fun, but overcome literal and mental obstacles. So I hate fucking running. Hate it. Always have. Always, always have. But I'm going to start running. I'm going to start getting fitter. I'm going to take you through the boxing. We're going to be doing that again. So we're going to be implementing that kind of fight style training into our strength training regime because I want to show you guys that you can still develop muscle and a great physique whilst also getting fitter and healthier because that is the purpose. Bodybuilding, I'm going to say it now and you can quote me on this, bodybuilding is not healthy. I don't think it's healthy in two respects. I don't think it's healthy in the fact that if all you do is bodybuild, you are not only going to limit yourself in your athletic ability, I think you're also limiting yourself in terms of longevity because it's brutal. And if you're not fit and athletic alongside, you're going to get you're going to get really tight. Muscle shortening is going to happen. We see this weird looking bodies that bodybuilders start to get now with these big guts and stunted like triceps and biceps also known as like palumboism and stuff like that whether that's to do with the drugs or whatever or not i think it's to do with the, the training the relentless smashing and breaking down to the muscle tissue that it shortens over time and then you end up with this like tendon looking anyway it's just i don't think it's healthy to be that niche in what you do i also don't think that the the current standing with bodybuilding in terms of diet and nutrition is healthy still. I think the majority of people think that chicken, broccoli, chicken and rice, no fruit, nothing good, no fun, and cheat days is still a big thing. And that to me leads to eating disorders. A cheat day is negative in the way it's even worded. A cheat day, like you're doing something wrong. If you're gonna do it, at least call it a reward day. You've earned it, you know what I mean, kind of thing. But the nonsense of the fact that you have to eat all week to then have this day of gluttony, it's going from one, one extreme to the other, and that's not balance. And everything you need in life is about balance. And that's what I want you to take from this new kind of training and lifestyle that I'm gonna be showing you. I want you to have that balance of, if your mates come to you at the weekend and go, I wanna go mountain biking this weekend, you have the capability to go, fuck yeah, I'm in. I am down with that. Because you'll be able to pedal a fucking bike uphill. Because you'll be fit, and you'll be athletic, but you'll still be able to look good. and. Moving into the boxing side of it, that would be one where I'd love it if some of you guys come and support me. Um, but again, I'm just going to be raising money for charity, so there will be an online thing for that. Um, I want to work alongside a couple of boxing coaches and things like that. I haven't arranged that yet specifically, but I have been given some really good links to certain people who seem like a really cool idea to go for. Problem is, at the moment, I'm also we're trying to move house. Myself and Lainey, uh, we currently live up in up in north up that wall <laughs> and uh, so we're trying to move a little bit further south so we can be closer to everyone and everything that kind of goes on in our world because obviously London is like the hub for a lot of things but obviously we've got Gymshark down in Birmingham and a lot of our friends are down that way so we're trying to move a little bit further south and obviously I think there's probably going to end up happening midway through all the shenanigans that I've got going on so we'll see how we deal with that uh, but in the meantime we'll try and set up um, a boxing coach up here and what I want to do is take some of the kind of the, the specific training, I'm going to have a strength trainer and a boxing trainer. Now, one of the guys I'll be using for the strength coaching side of things is a guy you might already follow. Um, I think he's called Fitness IQ or something on Instagram. We met in LA when I was out there before and he is down to help me kind of create a customized training regime in terms of getting stronger and better at the compound movements. And so I will be able to relay that into my own training, which I will then share with you guys and you can adapt it to yourselves. Then alongside that, obviously, I want to have a guy who specializes in the fight style of training. And the idea is going to be that I'll be doing these specialized kind of sessions. But what I'm going to do is then break them down into a, a form where you guys can take them and use them in your own place of training. So you, will, I'll take what we do that's special and I'll give you the alternative that will be readily available for you to be able to implement and do it yourself. So you, you can literally, not only will you literally be able to come and race Run, not race, because we're not race. Run side by side with me and raise money. You'll also be able to follow me through the rest of the training side by side, week to week, because I will give you that information. And from there, after all that, so that's going to be up until kind of like probably August-ish, 
beginning of September, that's the point then when I will then sign up to do a staged show, as in a bodybuilding competition. But I will be doing physique. I will not be doing the old school bodybuilding in small pants, even though I do own a lovely rare red shiny pair of bugly smudges. Bugly? <laughs> Budgy smugglers. Um, you can check out the photos of those from me online uh, from when I competed. It was around about five years ago, I think like that. Um, I was actually a, a, the, a champion, a North West or North something lightweight champion for a bit. And I made it through to the finals, came third in the finals um, in there. And I was like, eight kilos lighter than the next lightest guy on stage. It was crazy. The weight classes were so nuts. And I think physique is a better one for me in terms of, I think it's it's more relevant to you guys who watch me. It's more relevant to the up and coming generations of people looking at it. I think it's the more preferred kind of physique that people are going for. And I'd agree. I think it is the future that way. I think the classic bodybuilding is going to do a lot for the sport. I'm not going to call it a sport, for the hobby, for the pageant, whatever you want to call it. Um, I just, I don't like the way bodybuilding is going. I think it's going off the rails, bad physiques. I think physiques the way forward, that taper, that look. And it's something that a lot of you guys, I think, attain to look like anyway. So then I can take you through the diet and how I will go to that. During all this time, Ryan Terry is moving back to the UK and I will be training with Ryan through that time, which means I'll be able to do the diet advice with Ryan. I'll be able to do the posing, little hints and tips with Ryan, because obviously he's a pro at all these things. Um, Diet-wise, he pretty much, I think he has his things scripted, but I'll take you through all the macro breakdowns, how I'll be changing everything week to week, where I'll be starting, how it'll be structured, how we implement the cardio, yada, all of that good stuff. Complete transparency. Ain't hiding shit. Because, like I said, it's not a goddamn sport, it's a pageant. You don't need to hide anything. You turn up on the day looking the best that you can look, and that is your only goal. Whoever turns up next to you, that, that is what it is. It's the buy and buy. It doesn't make a blind bit of difference. And plus, it's freaking subjective. You know, you stand yourself up with sort of what, five old dudes in front of the table, judging who's the prettiest, what they want to see the most. It doesn't really fucking matter. Will I, would I like to place and do well? Of course I would. Does it really matter? Nah. It's just about the journey. And what I want to show is that through all the time while I'm doing the Tough Mudder training to run for this, this you know, little crazy marathon style tactical course, uh, whilst getting stronger, whilst then doing a boxing match, all these like crazy things that people seem to think takes, you know, a lot of fitness and effort and time, um, that you can do all of that and still develop a physique that once dieted down is good enough to step on a stage with other people who have literally dedicated themselves to only the craft of weightlifting. And that's what I want to prove. Because I want you guys to be able to step out of the fucking gym and go and enjoy life and be social. Because it will benefit you in every single aspect of your life, I promise you. I really, really do. I know because I've done it. I've come from many aspects. I've gone from rugby and weight training into tie fighting, no weight training, into MMA, balanced weight training with fight training, back to bodybuilding. I've, you know, I've done these paths. And I can tell you now, Yes, I got pretty fucking big, you know, about, I think, it was 18 months ago now, I think I kind of peaked, I got a crazy look, and I was just pure bodybuilding, pure, just gone back to that. I don't know why, I, at the time, I just, I don't know, I got addicted to it again for like a, you know, a, a year's period, plus with the traveling and everything like that, it was the easier, it was the easier option. Um, but I can tell you one thing, by the end of it, I felt like shit, I felt unfit, I felt heavy, I felt slow, um, I was getting loads of niggly problems, injuries, pings, twinges, um, and I don't want to be like that, like, you don't, you, I, what, 12 months and I was, and, and starting to get fucked up, I want something I can carry on and enjoy for a lifetime whilst looking good, and bodybuilding ain't that, it isn't, I don't care what you say, argue with me, let me know, <laughs> Uh, but the overall thing being here is I want you guys to just just have the options to be able to see that you don't need to be scared about going for a fucking run because it's going to burn all your muscle, man. It's just such bollocks. And we're going to we're going to blast through a lot of those myths as well um, through time. We're going to we're going to crush all those things that, that hold a lot of you back because I've been doing this for six years, like I said, um, in, in the social media game and the fitness and for a long time. And 
I thought people knew about macros and diet and things like that. And I realize now we are still a minority and there's still many, many, many of you that um, don't know this and are following the wrong path. So we will we'll go through why you don't need to be eating six meals a day, why you can run and it won't burn muscle. And I'll give you some uh, simple little things to be able to um, think about it very easily and understand why that's the case. Uh, I'll break it down for you and we'll cut, we'll do that with food, training and everything from here on out. And I hope, I hope this this fires a lot of you up to, to maybe think, yeah, fuck that. I was stuck before I was plateaued. I got bored. I'm going to admit to myself that I wasn't being my best. I wasn't performing to my utmost. I was just going through the fucking motions. And we are all going to sit up straight, accept our fucking responsibility that we, we faltered, we slacked off. And now we're going to suck it up and we're going to fucking get back out there. We're going to be the best that we can be. And that's all I want you guys to do alongside me. That's all I want. And that'll make me fucking proud. You guys already make me proud. The pictures and things that you guys have sent through after saying, dude, look, this was me when I first started watching you. Look at me now. You've inspired me to do this and that and the other. It's not an ego boost for me. It's literally a fucking boost in here, in my heart. It makes me feel fucking good that I've helped benefit someone else's life in a real positive way. It's not, it, it's, it makes me feel good to make you feel good. And that's a fucking nice thing to have. That's a nice life to live. So I think that's, I'm going to come to my, I'm going to, I'm going to leave this one here. It's been 55 minutes of me chatting nonsense to you guys. And I think we've got enough, enough information for one day. They'll probably run over a bit longer as I get going and I get more structured in these things. But let me know, let me know what you want to see from these crew casts. Uh, give me some ideas for topics and we will, I will literally, some of you guys have thrown some already and I will go through those in either videos or the crew casts. We will get people on here to um, to talk through things with you as well. So let me know who you want to see on here, bug them about it and we will make it happen. And I do just want to leave you with this one thing. I'm going to leave you every, every time, every time we do this, I'm going to leave you with one thing at the end of the day to take home. And it's going to be this. If you're one of those guys that when you're talking to somebody, after every second sentence, you say, do you understand me? Or do you get what I mean? Yes, we get what you mean because you are speaking English and you have said two sentences of which probably had eight words in them and weren't that complicated. <laughs> okay, yeah. So if you know somebody who does that or you're the guy that does that, listen, do you understand me? At the end of every sentence, stop it. Break the habit. Replace it with a good habit of saying nothing. Just carrying on to the next sentence. <laughs> and that's it. That's what I'm giving you from my coffee shop experiences the other day where I was uploading my video and I was earwigging on other people's conversations. Maybe my, I should take away from this is that I shouldn't earwig on other people. But, <laughs> but hey, I was bored. I was in that coffee shop for two and a half hours getting that video uploaded for you guys. So I appreciate the love. It's been amazing. Thank you very much. We are back on track. I've been Lex. This has been the crew cast. All the links and everything that you need for anything I've talked about will be in the description below or for whatever platform that you are on. SoundCloud, iTunes, they're all there. Download them. You'll be good. Have a great week. I'll catch you in this next episode. I'll see you on the YouTube. We are out.